Good morning, I'm Stephen, and I'm going to show you around your, your new motorhome and show you how everything works and run through everything with you. At the end of the day, we're only a phone call away if you get stuck, and there's an auto book pack with a vehicle that explains everything in detail more than you'll get from this. So, as we walk around the vehicle, first of all, we'll come, I'll, I'll, I'll do it at the start, and I'll get the keys out. So, you've got two sets of keys for the vehicle, and everything's on here. So, first of all, You've got your main engine key, and this has got your remote central lock-in. This key also operates the alarm that you've had fitted. And then there's the personal key, which will do all the habitation side of things. So that's the front end, and that's the back end. There's a couple of other little keys here, and these are for the extras, like the exterior lockers and the bed, the electric bed. And then there's an override key for the alarm. So we'll run through everything. So first of all, one of the extras, and that, if I come to it, is a little double-sided key, and that goes in there, turns, and there's your external gas point. So if I just do that up, and then below that is your toilet cassette. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this out. So if I just lift this handle here, and this serves for a couple of purposes. So first of all, it can be released and made into a barra clicks all back in and then you've got your funnel for your toilet set so your chemical goes in there and pulls straight in and then when you're emptying the set there's a vacuum button here as well so just press the vacuum button and empty the cassette now there's a, another little bit to the cassette of the flap inside so when the flap is open which is operated from inside the van you won't be able to remove the cassette and what I'll do is I'll show you that once we're inside the van so we'll pop that all back in. This just slides in, it's on these little jockey wheels. Slides in and locks back in place. And then like I was saying, the person the habitation key works all these lockers and locks these lockers. So you've got an external 240 point, 12 volt point and aerial extras. We'll work our way down and we'll open one of the garage doors. All the doors are on a hold back kit. And in here, we have the awning handle. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll wind the awning out a little bit of the way and just show you that all working. So basically, if I just show you the end, there's the end, it's a, a cross key. And that drops into there. And if you get into place, it will hold in place like that. So if we go the opposite way now, the awning winds out really, really easily. I'll wind it about halfway way out so we can just see the legs inside. So I'll just make sure the key's locked in. And here you've got your awning legs, and just here you've got your locking arms, which lock in to hold the framework in place, and you've got a little stowaway fly in there as well. So your awning legs are here, so if I just pull this this way, and you can see it sticks out now, and this releases it, you drop down, and you clip. So what you do is, you put your awning to where however you want it, and you just push the clip up. Just be very gentle with these, these are plastic, and they're, they're new, so they're really stiff at the moment. But then that, that's basically it. Then you wind the awning to your complete amount and you put your, your diagonals in. So I'll put that all back away for you. And I'll show you the opposite way around. So as you can see the foot, that goes into there like so. And then what I'll do, just push that back into place. And that's it. Just make sure everything's all tucked away. And it's a simple case of winding it back in. So we just wind that all the way back in. So that's the awning locked away in place. And then it's just a case of turning the key until it drops out. I'll wind the, the joint. And then I'll pop some there. There is some mounts at the top for the, the awning to go in place. Now, Simon's fitted you an alarm on this vehicle. 
And so all the habitation doors are all alarmed as well. So anything that's kept in the locker is stowed away safely. There's also a, a safety release on the doors. So for strange reasons, you got locked in the back, you can release yourself. So we'll carry on walking around. Again, the burst of the key operates all these doors. Oops, turn it the right way. We're better off there. At the back, you've got your bursting decals and your, your reverse camera. So again, the other garage, you've got your fit toolkit, plenty of storage room. You've got your rails with tie down points. So what I'll do is I'll close that all up. We'll forget about that. So as we move down the side, you've got your fridge vents, your high and low vents here. So that's for ventilation. You've got your gas locker, which is just here with your gas bottle. Close that down. Again, all these lockers are on the bursting key. So now we're moving on to one of the, the more complicated lockers. So this is your water cabinet, container, locker, whatever you want to call it. So your filling point is just here. So fresh water goes in there. You can remove this once the tank is empty to wipe down inside, keep the things clean. You've got a little wheel here. Now, if you turn this just half a turn, it will drain the tank down, but not fully. And then if you want to drain the tank fully, you wind it all the way until it stops. Never be forceful on these. It's, it's a simple mechanism, so just gently do it. If it gets stuck for any reason, just check inside. So that's your drain down for your tank. You've also got your boiler drain down, which is automatic. So that's your frost, frost valve. And you've got a small valve there that is manual drain down. Now, there's your hookup point as well. This is your 240 hookup. And there's a little cutout in the skirt there so you can put your cable through and still close the door at night. Now, on the door, there's a couple of little extras here. So this key is your waste drain. And this will fit onto here when you fill it up with water. So if I pop that onto there, that stops the water from going inside the van if it overflows. So we'll take that off and I'll just show you your waste drain. So as we look down the skirt of the van, you'll see a little sticker with a bucket. And if I feel underneath, there's a rod. Handle goes on to the rod like so. And I always get this the wrong way. I've been doing this for years. And you lift it up and the water that's in the waste tank will drain out automatically. At the moment, there's no water in there. It's all been drained down. So always remember, if you leave in the van for long periods of time, drain the water down. Don't carry water in there. And like I said, you can shut the locker door with the cable in. There's no problems. You've got your boiler flue here. This sucks air in and blows air out. This is it's sort of a, a diffuser. And at the moment, that's warm because we've got hot water on inside the van, which I'll show you when we get inside. So as we move a little bit further forward, I'll open the passenger door uh, and I'll show you a few things. So first of all, I showed you you've got your Fiat tool kit in the back. You've also got a spare wheel inflator kit here. So that's your, your inflator kit. On all your doors, you've got a blind. It's a simple pinch and it folds out. And this is the same across the cab as well. So these are your night blinds. So we'll show you a couple of the mechanical points now. So if I just put my fingers behind this lever here, and that pop, pops up on it so simply. And I'll shut this door and we'll walk around to the front. So the bonnet is the same as a car. So I just run my fingers along. I can feel the latch just there. Lift it and the bonnet opens. You've got your bonnet stages there. And that goes in like so. So there's a few things in here that you, you, you might need to know, you might not be worried about. First of all, you've got your alarm that's been fitted. You've got your oil filler cap. You've got your oil dipstick that's hidden the way down there. Header tank. And your water washer bottle as well. That's probably the only one that you need to know. Now, if for any reason you get a flat battery in the winter or anything like that and you want to move the van, something's been left on or anything like that, there's no need to worry. There is a, a starting point underneath the bonnet, even though the battery is no longer underneath here. You've got an earthing point just here, which is represented by this yellow sticker here. And you've got a positive point just here. 
underneath that cover. So they're all ready to go if you need to jump start the vehicle. All your oils are explained on the sticker as well. So now it's time to go inside and have a look. So we'll walk inside and I'll shut the door and I'll show you a few. So on the hinges, they're double hinges, so sometimes you think the door's loose, but it's not, and that's just for a better close. So while we're in this area here, this is your entrance area. So first of all, you've got your entrance lights. Now, a couple of these lights are, con uh, are controlled by the control panel. A couple are controlled by the van battery itself. So first of all, you've got your exterior entrance lights just there, and you've got your step. And then you've got your entrance lights in here. As you can see, it's all a, all a little bit of getting used to what works what, really. Uh, I've fitted you a TV and an aerial, and that's all wired all in and tested. And then you've got a couple of control panels up here. So the first one's quite straightforward. There's a symbol in the middle showing that I'm hooked up with electricity at the moment. There's another little light on here that shows you I've got the water pump on, and that can be turned off like so. As the power button, I'm not turning it off because we'll be in darkness then, but that's your power button. You've got your habitation battery your engine battery so as you can see at the moment habitation takes priority and that's on charge because we're on a hookup at the moment you've got your water showing you i've got 75 percent of fresh water in there and obviously we've just seen that we've got no waste water in there so there's nothing lighting up there at all so very very straightforward very very simple so next up is your heating panel i don't know if you've used these before so what i'll do is i'll try and explain it as simply as i can so as you can see, we've got another little symbol here showing we're hooked up with electricity, as like this one. So we know we've got 240 available. We've got a little symbol here flashing at the moment, which shows you that the hot water is warming up. When the hot water becomes temperature, uh, at least right temperature that I've got it set at, this will stop flashing. And I'll show you that on the heating settings in a second. So to activate it, I press the button and it all lights up and fires into life. So anything above this line is actually the operation that's working at the moment. And these are your, your four main symbols. Well, actually, really, the first three are your main symbols. So if I light it up again, you'll see this one flashing at the moment. This is the van heating. Now, it's a lovely warm day today, even though it's a bit overcast. So if I tap that again, you can see it's turned off at the moment. If I set that to something like 10 degrees, press it to activate it, and you'll see a little flame symbol come up. Now, this isn't flashing because it shows you it's warmer than 10 degrees in here. If the van was ever to drop below 10 degrees, this symbol would start flashing and the heating will automatically come on because that's what you've got it set at. So what I'll do is I'll turn that off, which is as simple as simple, and we'll roll to the next one, which is your heating. At the moment, I've got this on hot and it's not at temperature yet and that's why it's flashing. And you see a little bottle picture here and that's showing you that I'm running on gas at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'll stroll to here. So this is your source. We've got electricity and we've got gas on at the moment. So at the moment I'm running gas. If I roll the wheel, I can select a kilowatt electricity and gas, two kilowatts electricity and gas, or I can just go onto electric completely. So one kilowatt electricity or two. It's very, very simple. And it's always to activate it, just press. So at the moment you see now, the gas bottle's now got two lightning bolts next to it. We're warming up the hot water. Really, really simple, really, really straightforward. If I do something I don't know what I'm doing I, I go too far I'm, I'm on here I'm, I've lost the plot of what I'm doing just press the return button and you straight back to the normal screen and then when you're finished press and hold take a few seconds and everything's closed down and that's what you should practice when you finish with a vehicle make sure everything's closed down because turning the control panel off won't turn this panel off so while we're talking of gases and stuff like that we'll move on to the kitchen and we'll show you all the kitchen bits and pieces. So this is the kitchen area. Uh, I'm not very domesticated, so I'll, I'll talk to you the best way I can. You've got cupboard storage above. You've got lights that are on their own rail. So these lights all remove. They have a simple on off switch. They have a swivel to face them wherever you want. So we can put them, if I can get the place, wherever we want. Just move them about. And then uh, also Dometic offer a phone charging point, a USB point that clicks into the rail as well. So that's it on that one. Really, really straightforward. We've got under lighting, we've got rail lighting and everything like that. 
So while we're in here, the easiest option is to show you this window. So this window, there's a little button inside that releases. Now this is the only window that's like this and it's on the old lock stop. So twist that to unlock it and then latch it in. All the other windows are on a, a little step switch. Uh, you've got top, you have blinds, and bottom, you black out blinds. And so we'll move backwards and onto the, the cob. So this is your, your cooker. This is gas only. So basically, there's a little ghost sticker here that says do not close the top when it's hot. So if you've been cooking, don't put that down because all the heat will then just generate into that and it can crack. So what we'll do, we can turn the gas on like so. Now, nothing's happening at the moment because I've not activated it. What I need to do now, press it in to release the gas, do the igniter, hold the button in for a few seconds, then release. And that's your gas working. Really simple. And I can do that throughout. Leave them on, there's no problems. There's going to be no gas coming out until I press, hold it for a few seconds, and activate it. It's all on FFD, so it's all really, really clever and straightforward. There. You've got your pull out. So if you're using your, your grill, you've got your pull out heat vent to stop the heat from melting the cooker knobs, and everything's in there. So now we'll just go into the sink. Sinks are sinks, it's just like being at home. You've got your cover here, your sink plug, taps hot to the left, cold to the right. So if I just put that onto hot, lift the handle up, and after a few seconds, hot water will be coming through there. Obviously, you can't see that in the video, you just have to take our word for it. You know, it's, just get, it's coming warm now, so maybe we'll get a bit of, of steam. You can see a bit of condensation that's showing it's getting warm, and a bit of, bit of smoke, maybe it's not obvious. But there is. So that's that. Cupboards are all operated on a simple pull catch. So here you've got your gas taps. This can turn your gas off in the vehicle if you wanted to. It all depends how you, you decide to run, you know, it's your van now, it's how, how you decide to go. But you can turn an appliance off just by doing so and back on. Drawers. You're all in extras and your bed wind down. If you was ever to have a problem with the electric bed, that could be wound down like so. So I'll just put all those back in there. Just show you a few little bits and pieces. So under this one is your electrics. These are your 240 electrics. So if you have any problems, it's all in there, all your trip switches. And that brings us to the fridge. At the moment the fridge isn't turned on so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you the operation of the fridge so first of all to open the door simply pull the handle and as you can see there's nothing lit up at the moment nothing's working so what i'm going to do i'm going to pop everything on now so you've got your power button and you can see i've just activated that and it's all come on so at the moment it's got no gas to it so what we'll do is we'll work through so i've put it onto mains at the moment because we're hooked up to mains and so that's the ideal thing. You can see the temperature's right the way up and what we can do, we can adjust that like so. You've got an auto switch just here. So if you put it onto auto, it'll automatically select mains unless you're traveling, then it'll go onto engine battery. And then after you've been driving, if you don't hook up 50 minutes later, it'll go onto, onto gas. So it's all really, really simple. And if I open it up now, you can see you've got your nice warm glow to show that it's all on and working and your freezer is at the top like so so there's a few little bits of information on on the door and that's all straightforward you've got cupboard space above which is all vented and you've got wardrobe space just here and then what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you your aerial so i've popped you a short pole aerial in the back there i've kept it all nice and neat on this wall and you can see your switch there so I could turn it off if I can reach just there turn the aerial off if I wanted to or put it on and it's all controlled by the control panel so once your control panels off everything's off so to get your TV picture we twist this like so just loosen it off and we just lift the aerial up and you spin it round and you can just see the glow I don't know if it picks up there you see the glow change and that's 
your signal strength. A lot of the time the aerials will work all the way down. It just depends where you are. So what I do is I just lock that all off and that's all in place and that's all done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing this door open and this is the bathroom. So very straightforward, you've got shower room, your toilet and your sink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crouch down on the floor and just show you a few things in here. So first of all, I'll pull the sink plug out and you've got your waterfall tap. So if I just put that to hot and there you go, the water's coming out like so. So next up is your toilet. Now this is supplied by your water that's on, on board. So once you fill it up with water, you've got water here. So if I'm turning the toilet round out of the way now, what I'm going to do is lift this up and you can see if I press the flush, the water comes out and fills up. Now I was saying about removing the cassette. At the moment the cassette can be removed because the flap is closed. Once I open the flap and the water goes into the cassette, if that's left open the cassette won't remove. So you need to always make sure the flap is closed. Really straightforward. You've got a warning light to tell you when the cassette's full, but I recommend that, you know, on a daily basis, if you're in the van for a long period of time, always empty your waste whenever you can. Take the opportunity. Under here, you've got a 240 socket, and you've got a couple of light switches. So one operates the shower, and one operates the vanity mirror. Inside, you've got your shower doors. They're on a bit of Volcro at the bottom there, don't, nothing's broken. Obviously you need to be in the shower ready to push it shut properly. I'm not jumping there just yet. And that's really it, that's a, a shower. Uh, your shower head there, your tap, and plenty of water on board. So as we go into the back, we've got a few more bits and pieces. So we've got underbed storage. And a boot box for your shoes and stuff like that. You've got your steps up into your bed, and I'll let the model go up in front of me. And you can see your blinds and your bedroom area, your overhead cupboards. You've also got your skylight and your blinds on your skylight. So at the moment, I've got the Roman blinds down. You've still got your, your top and bottom nets and blackout blinds in there as well. You've got a few little bits and pieces of spares, so you've got your TV extras that comes with your TV and you've got some cupboard packaging that helps you store your plates and everything like that. So now what I'll do is I've got Molly behind me and I'll show you the overhead bed. So I'm not going to bring it all the way down but I'm going to just, just show you the basics. So what we've got, I was talking to you about the keys. So we've got two keys, one's got a flat side to it and one's got a double side to it. So now we're going to the flat sided key and that slides in like so. So at the moment nothing's on. I turn it there and the bed is now active. So what I can do, if I press the button and the bed will come down. So obviously at the moment I've got bits and pieces in, in place. So the, the cushion on the opposite side needs to be laid flat. You want to make sure that the lamps aren't crashing into the table and stuff like that. And there, there's your bed. Uh, so I'll show you where the ladder's stored next for getting into it. So once the bed's all the way down, You've got your ladder points just here. So we fire that up. Oh, the lights above the bed are actually just button, press buttons. They're like the battery operated lights that you just press the middle to turn them on and off. So if we just wind that all the way up, lock it in, and we take the keys out. Obviously, never leave the key in or anything like that for safety reasons. So, what I'm going to do now is I'll just show you in the floor. So. There's your ladder, and that's stored away in there for your bed, all nice and out of the way. In the front, you've obviously got your overhead lockers. You've got more windows. These are on the, the push-out catch, so what I'll do is I'll just show you this one. So this is basically push it out gently and it'll hold. Push it a little bit more. I'll get it right. <laughs> and it releases. 
So obviously just practice not doing that against the wall or anything like that, because you might get the windows stuck. Again, like on all the windows, you've got your blackout blind and you've got your nets. Up here, got some more light switches. So first of all, you've got your overhead lights, so you can turn them off when the bed's down. And you've got a little switch here that does some puddle lights. So throughout the van, there's little puddle lights in the skirting boards. And that's so you can get up and go to the toilet at night without putting all the lights on in the van. You've got your forward facing seat belts and your boiler is placed underneath this seat here. If you needed to get to it for any reason, any water tank. The book pack that I keep going on about is all here and everything is in there from your spare set of keys. So obviously you've no longer got a remote key now. This is your spare set of keys. So your, your spare Fiat key is just a normal key. Your burst key stays the same. You've got your bed key and your external accessories and now your alarm flob. So with the main set of keys, your alarm is worked by the main key by simply unlocking and locking the doors. And this is the same on this. So you've got a lock and an unlock for the alarm. So if your partner or whatever was away using the spare set of keys, they could still get in the van and turn the alarm on and off to get in. All your bits and pieces are in here from the information about your boiler, information about the bed, even information about the blinds on the cab. So it's all, all explained. So there's no reason to worry. Your control panels, your Fiat key code, everything is all, all straightforward. Even the information on the solar panel, it's all in there. Your electric block, which is under the seat, and there's a book about your guarantees, which I'll briefly explain to you. So you've got a, a, a 10 year water ingress guarantee. You've got a two year guarantee on everything else. But obviously it's all vital that you keep your servicing up to date. So to keep that in place. So everything's in there and everything's explained. And like I say, we're only a phone call away or you know, a book away. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna jump into the front. I'm gonna show you the last little bits and pieces and hope you enjoy everything from there. So as we go into the front, you've got your radio, you've got your phantom alarm information. So this Simon's fitted you, I think it's a tracker on this one, an uh, alarm and tracker. So that's there. And as you can see at the moment, we've got the radio on. So you've got your microphone for your Bluetooth. You've got your map board, which releases. So you can put an iPad or anything like that on there. Click it all back in drop it down so here we go in the front we've got it's basically all your car material here so you've got your heat controls from your fan speed to you inside outside to your directions to your aircon button heating high or low so that's all straightforward you've got your electric heated mirrors you've got your central lock-in hazard warning lights You've got your hill descent and your traction control all explained in the handbook so i always recommend that you you have a quick read as well and just familiarize yourself with things stuff like the cruise control and stuff like that it's always best you know not explain quickly in a video it's best to just go into it a little bit detail so what i'll do is i'll just show you the radio now so first of all you've got your source button your direction buttons your volume button which is also controlled on the steering wheel so as you can see, I'm just turning that up and down on the steering wheel. And then you've got a few little bit, bits more. So first of all, you've got your home screen, which we're on at the moment. So that just tells you everything that's there. So it's all, all there. Uh, next up, you've got your camera. Now obviously the ignition's not on at the moment, so that's not running. If the ignition was on, which I've left the keys in the back, that would bring up the camera. And then if I press that again, that releases that. And I can go on to navigation. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to load it up. Here we go, we've got a quick one today. And that's just telling you whereabouts we are. So as you can see, we're in Lincoln. There's no destination set at the moment. If I just press there, you've got your route planner. It's all a little bit of, uh, of having a go and playing on this one. And I can just return. I can press the home screen and go back. I can go back to navigation if you want to map while you're driving, anything like that. So as you see, they've tested it on road test and they've just gone down the road to Cherry Willingham and back. So they've just put that in. Show you all that working. Okay, so what I've done now is I've popped the ignition in 
the, the ignition key in, and this is like now slightly operating on the front. At the moment, the radio was working on the back. Now the ignition's on, the radio's working on the front. So there's a couple more things to know now. So I was talking about the camera. Uh, obviously, it went into the mode, but while the engine wasn't turned on or the ignition wasn't on, it didn't work. So if now we press the camera, we go into camera mode. And so that can be used as a rear view mirror, or when you drop it into reverse, it will select your camera automatically. So just press that always. Oh, if, if you go into camera and you, you're pressing the other op options and they're not doing anything, don't worry, you've got to take the camera off. So it's all part of the program. Uh, over here, I've got a little red light on. And this is just showing me that the step is out on the vehicle. I can't pull the step in from, from the cab, but that just shows you before driving, you've got a red warning light on there. You've got your cab blinds. And these have got a little cut out in the middle for the mirror. And they're on a magnet, so they just clip together and hold in place. And now one of the other things is the overhead bed. I explained before about bringing it down. So to bring the cab, the whole red bed down all the way, there's a little lever here on the seat. And as you can see now, I've, I've released that and the seat starts to turn. I keep moving it backwards and forwards till I'm in the position where the seat is so. And this allows the bed now to come all the way down and not catch on anything. So obviously sometimes when the headrests are all the way back, it could catch on them and that wouldn't be good. So as you can see at the moment, catching on the steering wheel there. So what we do is move the seat back and forwards, spin it all around and then it locks in. Make sure it's locked in before driving. Don't be driving off like that. You've got a couple of little compartments here. You've got your cups, you've got your Phantom Tracker bottle opener, you've got a battery compartment there, you've got a fuel compartment here. These are all really for us, not for yourselves. So now really it's all about just having a go, getting used to it and getting out on the open road and enjoy camping. Thank you very much.